Sometimes after I braid my hair and I take it down and it's all frizzy like this, I like to say I'm Hermione Granger trying to mix up the drought of death levels of frizz. Hi guys, Chelsea here. So this weekend we took a trip up to Tuscaloosa to visit that random guy's family. We had a lot of fun, we really enjoyed visiting with his aunt and uncle and celebrating his uncle's birthday. And just to make things better, we found our first Barnes & Noble that I've been to in about four years. Here in Mobile, we don't have a Barnes & Noble, we only have a Books A Million. we had to stop in and get two huge bags full of books. So this became the perfect opportunity to do my first book haul video which I am super excited about so I'm just gonna get started. So because we went in together to get all these books we were able to get way more than either of us could have by our, on our own which is great because even if the whole what series is mine thing isn't legal yet we do have a house together, so in every other sense it's true. So I'll go ahead and start with random guy's books. First off we got Watchmen, which he has read and seen the movie before, but I have not. I'm not usually one for graphic novels, but he really wanted it and he wants me to read it, so I'm gonna give it a shot. I actually, other than that it's like some kind of weird mutant superhero type movie or book, I guess. I don't know a whole lot about Watchmen, so it'll definitely be an interesting experience. I do know my best friend. Uh, freshman year of college, she actually took a class and they read Watchmen and watched the movie as part of the class and she said it was very interesting, um, so that should be fun. Next on his book list was Dune. I know it's like a science fiction book, but I haven't read it before. He has some of the other books on the bookshelf, um, but it's not something I've ever really been interested in, but I have been getting more into science fiction lately, so who knows, maybe I'll pick it up and read it. I mean, and just reading the back of the book, which I haven't actually, I didn't actually do before I started filming this, it actually sounds kind of interesting and very dramatic, which I like, so who knows. Next were three sort of classics. He's read at least one of them, and then two of them that we both want to read. First off, we got The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by Frank Baum, which of course I've seen the movie. I love the movie. I've heard it's very different from the book. Reading it as an adult, I'll definitely be interested to see what started it all. Then we got The Hunchback of Notre Dame, which I've been wanting to read for a really long time, but I haven't had the book. And again, it's probably really different from the Disney movie that I honestly haven't seen since I was a young kid. It seems very much like Les Mis, I suppose, which I really, really like. And then finally, we got The Federalists because why the hell not? We're both in interested in history and expanding our intellectuality. Is that a word? Says the English major. But we just thought this might be something fun and different that we don't have a whole lot of on our bookshelf. So yay! And then finally we got this behemoth, which is Grey's Anatomy. Very big. Neither of us actually intends to read this all the way through, of course. But we do have a stack of these fancy Barnes & Noble books in our living room, or our formal living room. Um, which we thought this would go nicely with. Plus, it's just cool for reference and it's pretty. And now the rest of these are going to be the books that I chose for me. Later last week, I actually posted a list of books that I wanted to get at the bookstore. Unfortunately, Barnes & Noble didn't have all of them or they only had them in hardback and I am sort of on a budget even though we did, yes, just spend $150 on books. And so paperback is always better for me, plus they're lighter and we only have one bookshelf so it's kind of easier to squish them in if they're paperback. So the first one off my original list that I got is The Bone Shaker by Sherry Priest. A person I follow on Instagram actually posted a picture of this, a link to the profile down below. And she described it as a zombie steampunk book which really caught my attention so I'm really excited to read this. This is actually probably going to end up being my July book based on that description alone. The second book off my list that they had at the Barnes & Noble is Where Things Come Back by John Corey Whaley. So I was reading the description on Goodreads and it started talking about this small town and they find this supposedly extinct woodpecker and everything kind of gets really exciting and I almost skipped it because I thought this is gonna be one of those weird Adam Sandler comedy-esque stories not interested but I'm glad I kept reading the description because there's gonna be a lot more tension and mystery and drama in it than that. By the time I was finished reading the description on Goodreads I knew I had to get it. So I'm really excited that this one was there. It took me a long time to find it because for some reason all the books in Tuscaloosa are not in alphabetical order. There are actually two sections of Whaley's and the team 
fiction section. And I originally found the first and it only had one of his books. I was really frustrated and then I turned around and it was actually again on the shelf behind them but they had like started over. It was really weird. I had a lot of trouble finding books at the Barnes & Noble but luckily I found this one. The last book that was actually on my list when I went to the bookstore that I was able to find was Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. Am I the only one who pronounces her name Gillian? That's what I just assumed. Is it actually Gillian? Does anyone know? Comment in the section below. Last week random guy and a friend of ours we all sat down and watched the movie for Gone Girl and it was really good. I assumed it wasn't gonna be that good even though I had heard it was really good and so I was like I'll just watch it and not read the book but it was really really good. Even though I think the book and the movie are gonna be really similar I really wanted to pick this up and read it and see what her writing style is like because I've heard a lot of good things about some of her other books. This might be a good intro to her before I go and get any of those other ones. Alright, I ended up getting three more books that were not on my list that I just found at the bookstore. First off is The Enemy by Charlie Hickson. This book is the first in a series and I actually came across the fourth or fifth book of the installment on an end cap and it sounded really good and I almost picked that one up to buy it but then I realized it was a series so I went and got the first one. It looks like some sort of post-apocalyptic zombie-esque story which in case you haven't picked it up I love zombies I love survivalism I love post-apocalypse good bad ugly doesn't matter I like them all so I'm hoping this is really good and I'm hoping I'll really enjoy it and be able to get into this series and then finally I got two books by the same author an author I've actually read before my junior senior year at college I took this writing course and so one of the books we read was called City of Glass by Paul Oster it was really good I enjoyed it a lot it was probably one of my favorite books from that class I just kind of went looking around to see what else he had written because I enjoyed his style. And I found out that City of Glass is actually one of a trilogy, the New York trilogy. Luckily I found this copy. It has all three books in it, including City... I got that for Random Guy for his birthday. Now it's disrupting things. It dings in the quarter hour, so you can tell exactly how long I've been filming this video. I was really excited that all three books were included in this copy, so I can just read them all straight through. It does mean I have two copies of City of Glass, but hey, there are worse things, right? Finally, uh, Moon Palace, also by Paul Astor. I don't know what it's about because the back has no information, the flaps have no information either. So I really have no idea what it's about, but I like Paul Astor's writing, so I was like, what the heck? It's also a really pretty cover, and it's not going to focus for me to show you what this cover looks like. And I'm one of those awful people who judges books by their covers, so there you go. The books I didn't find were How I Live Now by Meg Rosef, Boy A by Jonathan Travell, Coco by Peter Straub. And finally, the last one that was on my list that I did not find was Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rawl. It did have hardback versions of the book, but they didn't have any paperback versions. But otherwise, that's it. I'll link you down below to my website, chelseamwallace.com, where you can follow two of my blogs, Chelsea Comments, where I basically just talk about whatever I want to talk about on any given day, and The Right Stuff, which is where I talk about reading and writing things. I also have links to Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, so you can follow me down there and keep up on what I'm doing. All right, I think that's enough for one video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Feel free to comment below and start a discussion. Bye.